Aloha y'all, Daniel Aaron here, your guide to vibrant living. And this is such a juicy, important topic. You know what I'm talking about, it's the C-dip. No, you don't know what the C-dip is? Okay, good, well, you will soon. And I promise you, I swear, this is actually, for real, one of the coolest, most important things that you could ever know about. Now, what we do here, talk about, share information, stories, the art of vibrant living, how you can create your life to be a masterpiece of vibrancy. And if this is useful, interesting, helpful, please like, share, subscribe. Let's create more vibrancy in the world. Now, the CDIP stands for No Big Suspense, Creative, Dynamic, Inward Process, right? CDIP, Creative, Dynamic, inward process. And I use that term specifically, I have such reverence, appreciation, <sighs> gratitude for the C-dip, which I'll explain more of what that means and why I use those funny terms, because it's been such a powerfully transformative thing in my own life. Now, 28 years ago, I was a very ordinary dude, um, had no interest in religion, spirituality, any of that, and the spirit whoop, knocked me upside the head, and you could call it a spiritual awakening, you could call it going crazy, whatever you call it, my former reality, my former worldviews were whoop, obliterated. And I tasted, experienced the divine, a sense of bliss, a liberation, connectedness, oneness, I don't have any of those terms, by the way. I didn't even know that was available. So powerfully that I went right from, yeah, kind of an agnostic. I don't know if there's anything God, any of that, to like, not like, oh, I think there is, or I want to experience that. I went from, yeah, not really interested. I don't think there's there, but maybe just in case, to absolute, complete knowing, no questioning by experience, the only true knowing. The problem, the challenge was I didn't know how to live that continuously. I knew I couldn't go back to what I'd been experiencing. What I also knew was there's, there's all this stuff that I'd tasted, experienced, had a glimpse of what's called Satori in Buddhism. I'd had this glimpse of enlightenment, even though that's a problematic word, we'll deal with that another time. Yet I didn't know how to live it, so I became obsessed with personal and spiritual development. At first, it was like, I'm gonna to move to this place called Omega Institute. I don't know, my friend said it's cool, holistic uh, learning center, they called it. I learned to call it New Age Summer Camp for Adults. I moved there, it was a whole world of seminars, trainings, retreats, amazing teachers in all kinds of topics, all kind of around holism, spirituality in some way. And for me, the very first practice that came to me out of that awakening in, in, in response to the question of, how, what do I do about this experience I had, this awakening? How do I live it? Well, it soon became apparent that some kind of practice would be good. And the very first one that came to me, or I went to, I gravitated towards was Zen meditation. And I'm so grateful, like for me learning the discipline of sitting on a Zafu, Zafu is like a little cushion. And for me, Zafu in the beginning was like this high because I was so stiff in my hips. I'm sitting on a Zafu here, I'm in front of my little altar at home. And now my Zafu is only this tall. <laughs> it's pretty tall though. I find it useful because when I meditate, I, you know, I want to sit up, I want to, um, be in a position, a regal position, a position conducive to the practice. Anyway, my very first practice was Zen meditation. I'm so grateful it taught me so much. And skipping ahead almost 30 years, moving through many, 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 many types of practices, yoga being a big one, yoga practice, and all kinds of meditation, all kinds of practices, what I have come to in my own experience and now working with hundreds and thousands of students and clients is the CDIP, Creative Dynamic Inward Process. And why do I call it that way instead of saying meditation? Well, 
because meditation is one of those words that is so commonly used, maybe overused, it's, um, how do we want to say, hard to say what it really means. People have a different association with it. You know, when I, back in the day when I was leading yoga teacher trainings, what I found a lot was people, um, if I said meditate, they would be like, get candles out, burn some incense, put a shawl on, maybe some lavender and I, you know, and nothing wrong with any of those things. I love all those things. And the association I discovered then was very different than what my Zen meditation training was. Zen meditation, it's about whew, being present. And literally the teacher in the uh, dojo or the zendo we call it would be walking around and if he or she sensed that somebody was losing presence sometimes it was really obvious because we'd be like you know doing that kind of thing they would take the famous zen stick and go whoosh, you know and smack us because that was a practice in cultivating attention anyway that was not what a lot of people associated with yoga practice I found or with, yoga, with uh, meditation. I found in the teacher trainings that a lot of people had this like, yeah, it's just kind of this cozy, sleepy, it's like a bath. So I've come to realize that meditation is an oft confused term. I don't like to use it. It's like love. Well, it means something different to everybody. So the reason I call it the creative dynamic inward process goes to what Einstein said, which is imagination is more important than knowledge. Why? Because imagination is creative. It's imagination that births the world. When I lived in LA, crazy place, all kinds of things happening there, right? Challenging in ways, dirty in ways, yet beautifully, one of my friends said, it's a place built on dreams, right? And imagination is what creates all of physical reality. Think about it. Everything in your life, yourself included, was once a thought, was once an imagination. And this power, y'all, if we develop it, and I submit for your mature consideration that there is no more important skill to learn in life than this. This is the number one skill learning how to use our imagination creatively for what we want to create, for what we want to happen, for what we want to experience in life is way more important than anything else. And the alternative is that we are using our imagination accidentally by default. Even worse, often the case, creating things that we don't want because we haven't realized the power that we have. So, the creative dynamic inward process is a process for realizing what we want. It's, and I mean realizing in the sense of making real, making material, right? Joe Dispenza has this great line he uses in different ways, which is make your mind matter, right? Make your mind matter, which is use your mind, make it important, make it matter. Also, Use your mind to make matter, to take things from etheric into physical matter, to go from 5D to 3D. So the creative dynamic inward process is, well, let's deal with the last part first. That's the easiest, right? Inward process means close your eyes, right? And that's, you know, that's uh, not always, but often part of what we call meditation. In yoga language, it's pratyahara, withdrawal of the senses. It means stop, stop the madness. It means stop taking in sensory information for a little while. Go within, go within or go without, right? So that's the inward process. From the outside, it looks like nothing's happened. It does look like somebody's just taking a nap, having a little chill out. And inside though, a lot is happening. That's the creative dynamic part. So it's not just following your breath. It's not just perhaps slowing down your mind or noticing when you're thinking, all of which are great, valuable practices. And I have spent years of my life endeavoring to dive into those specific forms of meditation. Very valuable. And there's more, much more. 
the much more is the creative dynamic part. So the way that works is, here's the little quick instruction manual, which by the way, this is quick. I am being quick on this. This is such an important topic in my training, Living the Vibration of Vibrancy, the transformational program. So important. This is one of the fantastic four, the things that I say, the four essential practices for creating a vibrant life, for being a masterful creator. So the quick version though, which we're doing here, and we can talk more if you like, the quick version is to get into the creative dynamic inward process. First, yes, take a seat, close the eyes, right? Maybe use a mask, maybe use some music, right? Block out the other stuff. Give yourself the optimal conditions for being able to focus without being disturbed. Then get into the zone. What does that mean? Right. I had a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful client years ago. I had never done any meditation, yoga, any of that stuff. Just was really sweet woman. Uh, she was actually a famous woman, a um, radio personality. And she, none of this experience, she was open and um, receptive. And so I gave her the same instructions I'll give you in brief. And she said, oh, after she'd practiced a little, she's like, oh, the fuzzy space get into the fuzzy space. So that's the zone. The zone is when we take our brain waves from beta normal everyday consciousness active, get things done, that kind of energy down a notch to alpha, right? To relaxed, to awake yet a relaxed. That's the optimal learning state. It's a little bit slower wave brain wave. And when our brain waves come down, our suggestibility, our hypnotic state goes up. This is a really good thing, especially if you are the one giving the instructions, giving the information. Now, when we're watching TV and somebody trying to sell us something is putting us in a hypnotic state, maybe not the best. We wanna be on alert for that, however, when we are giving it to ourselves, we are reducing our brain waves, increasing our suggestibility, getting into a bit of a trance, then it's like we're entering the operating system of the human being. Then we can go into ourselves and make real change, create what we want. We can heal, we can experience the mystical, we can see what we want to create, imagine it, feel it, and that's key, we'll talk about that in depth another time, and do an emotional rehearsal, a role playing of what it's like, right? We go into an alternate reality, the world of 5D, the world of imagination, to experience, create, experience what we want. And the longer we can hang out in that and make it really real, brain doesn't know any better. The brain says, oh, that's what's up, that's what's up. right? And then eventually we come back to the regular world, to 3D, and our nervous system, our brain, our spirit has experienced this other thing and so knows it's real. Our energy is there. It's a quantum event. We are entangled to it and so we are attracting it to us. That's how we create what we create in the world. I remember years ago, I had a very, last thing I'll tell you, years ago I had a very strict teacher and he was all about be present. Don't think about the future. Don't make commitments about the future. Don't think about the past. Wake up. It's a very intense dude. Beautiful, amazing, super clear dude. And I'd been doing a lot of this training with him and I was really into this thing of I'm not, I'm not planning, I'm not thinking about the future. And so I remember coming across the quotation at the time that said, the best way to plan for the future is to create it. And I just saw that at a glance and I thought, I don't want to be in the future. I don't want to think about the future, right? And I rejected it. So when, when I learned this process I'm telling you about more clearly years ago, I remembered that quotation and I realized, ah, we're doing that all the time, right? The best way to plan for the future, oh, actually, and there's a variation on it, which is the best way to predict the future. Right? The best way to predict the future 
is to create it. And this is the power of the C-dip. C-dip. It's creating our future intentionally. It's an amazing, amazing, huge power we have. I hope you appreciate it. I hope you are engaging in it. Let me know. What do you think? Am I making this all up? Is this crazy talk? Does it make sense? Is this like elementary and you're way beyond this? What do you think? How do you engage with this? What's your process for creating? I read all the comments. I appreciate it. Again, if it's interesting, useful, please like, subscribe, share. Let's get the word out. Let's get more people to the vibrant living party in life. And thank you so much for tuning in, for being motivated and interested to create your life into a masterpiece and for letting me share with you. I really appreciate it. And with that, I bid you adieu. Aloha. Ciao.